hello, I hope you're all doing okay. Today I want to be talking about component placement and why it matters. And it doesn't matter that if you place the components, you know, you don't really need to fit them. You know, there's the, with hardware, we don't have a version control. And I feel like this is alleviate that if we make mistakes and such. And it gives us more flexibility, this kind of thing. We have version control and design, but once we put that board into manufacture, we don't have a control Z to, to go back to and, you know, make refix our errors and whatnot. So let's get into it. I, this schematic right here is from a nuclear board, a WL55, I believe, STM32. And it's a board I'm working with on the project. It has, it's very interesting. Chef has Laura and everything. I wanted to go over these components here that I've been using this as a reference to understand it a bit more and develop my learning. These do not fit components over here. You, you have probably seen them a lot. You may have used these in your own designs. But I want to say how important and how helpful they are. Let's take a look at this crystal over here. We can see it's an external HSE clock. It's an oscillator. It is going from the VDD and it's coming out just on this crystal line over here. You can see it only needs the out. So that's why it is connected through here, through these components. And we see it do not fit, which I assume are zero ohm resistors to this external HSE clock as a backup. So you might be thinking, well, why, why is this? What if this oscillator might fail? I don't know what under any circumstances, whatever this fails or they want to try something different. And you know, with this solder bridge, and if you do not know, I'll put a picture up on now to see what it looks like as you can see the tiny little interconnects on that image and you can see you can see that this is what it keeps it connected what you could actually do if you wanted to make a different modify your board if you could just slice through that and make a disconnect and this allows for so much variation and, and modifiability i don't even know if that's a word the ability to modify your board as you will come to whatever circumstances you need or parameters so that soldier bridge is there for if there is something issue and you can just stick on the zero ohm resistors over here and it would just make it so you can use this crystal again as well fit the components the capacitors on here this may seem such a simple thing this may seem almost like common sense but believe me when i started i had no idea this was an actual thing i didn't think like oh you could actually do that you don't need to just complace components and it comes down to it you choose what you want to do very very helpful and convenient and also I highly suggest you include these types of things in your circuits if you're unsure for example maybe you need to pull up on something maybe you're unsure of a value place it and I'll get more to that in a second and that second is right now let's take a look at these pi filters over here so because this is a nuclear board it's already probably been through iterations and you know what is the best thing to make it work and make it easy for the consumer to get up and running but what if we didn't know these values what if we had an antenna we weren't too sure about it or we're just trying something you can just place those components in there I would, I would just place a standard set of components maybe 0603 package size just chuck them in there and i'll be happy on my days this allows you to retune it or well it's but it's a pie matching filter isn't it it's that network that, that impedance matching that we so love and desire to get to get it move across that 50 ohm uh, viewing what i would say as again leave them in there and because if you take them out you don't have that option anymore and it's no good it's not like it's going to incur extra cost anyway for doing a bit more extra pads and whatnot and if it's there have the line coming through anyway so it doesn't really really matter and what you could do when well, you need a pie you need a pie matching network anyway so just leave the parts on there and if you really didn't you can put a zero ohm link across it well, no, but i really even really suggested for rf type stuff but i'm saying for other things so maybe like battery if you're you know if it's unre unrechargeable and whatnot back here to paint my good old friend so what you could do if as, as an example you you had a, a switch here and you didn't need it. it was for testing purposes you you had a battery over here and you had a battery over here you want to switch it on and off but let's say it's it's gone into your production you know it's one of these like tag labels you want to put active and it's a one-time use battery type of thing so you you take off the switch and you put in a, a zero ohm link right over here and when you come to manufacture you just say okay do not fit this and fit fit our this uh fit our 100 that's all you need to do so you can see already how flexible of it this is just a very basic example but you could see you know if you if you get thinking oh maybe i could just put this instead of this or i can replace this value instead of this and it's just it's just that little bit of extra flexibility that we have when we're sitting on show we're still in the testing phase of our of our design that we can see it can be extremely helpful in some cases uh here we are at a design but it's just a one little quick tip when you place these zero ohm links and i know this isn't the best example but it, it's the gas sensor board i've had on me and with these zero ohm links, I know you know that these are lim current limiting resistors, but if you had a zero ohm link, I would highly suggest to place it near to the end of your driver. So, for example, I would have placed these resistors probably closer to here as opposed to here. So, uh, for example, I don't know for what reason, maybe I 
didn't need to use the green one and I wanted to save the, the pennies on my resistor not being fitted at all if I'm not going to use it. If I had the resistor over here, this would avoid being an antenna if had I just left the design because if we go into our 3D view, we're in the 3D view here and what would happen if this resistor was not fitted and it was a more <laughs> crucial signal or besides a GPIO type thing. What would be happen here? What would happen is that this would actually act as an antenna because we've just got an open-ended thing. We don't have it anywhere connected. So we've essentially got an antenna here. This really is no good. So like I said before, I would have moved these resistors down here had it, had it been a zero ohm component or I wasn't going to fit them. Move them down here to this pin here just so because it'd be a shorter line and this acts just so it's a shorter line, you know, let's have this long line going across here as an radiating as an antenna. It's just these small things to be aware of and it could really help out in your design and make it more practical, I'd say more more professional looking at the end of the day. So that's all I wanted to talk about on this on this one. Just a brief summary and tie it all up together. Use these zero ohm resistors or solder bridges if if you would. It comes down to how flexible you want it to be if you do not want to fiddle around with the soldering of the zero ohm resistors and whatnot. If you just want to use these solder bridges and you can always solder them back together if you would. It really depends on you and how you want things to be done use them as you would if you're unsure about components place them anyway they don't get used they don't get used and you save yourself opponent but if they get used then good on you you've already placed down the footprint there zero ohm resistor placement place them as close to the driver pins as possible so if you do not come to use them they act less as, as an antenna for this line coming through in your PCB.